Hi, welcome to Funnet Power Videos. This is DC here. In this video, you're going to learn how to use access bits in MiFi Classic RFID tags. Now, access bits control the read and write access for individual block. We have seen the we have seen how the access bits work in the previous videos. It is not required for everyone to understand what I discussed in this video. So if you're a casual user who like to read and write or see what's in the card, you don't have to understand this video at all. So this is good for the software developers or the students of technology. You must have a knowledge on the binary numbers, something about bits and the binary complement. Here is an example. The decimal 6 in binary is 110. So if you know binary, you know what exactly this is. The complement of any binary number is changing from 1s to zeros. Say the complement of 110 is 001. So here the 1 is changed to 0, this 1 is changed to 0, and this 0 is changed to 1. Now the access bits are stored using both binary and its complement. Now, a bit of a caution. So, you, you have to be very careful when you directly write the access bits because if you end up writing some number or some combination of complement and uh, the actual binaries, you will end up having a sector trial or sector, entire sector, which is inaccessible. So, you have to refer to the MIFA classic documentation to understand these bits and so once you are done all these things, you know, you'll be ready to play with access bits. This is the document of MIFI Classic EV1. I'm referring the document from EV1 is because this concept of access bits is the same for the MIFI Classic as well as MIFI Classic EV1. And I advise you to read more about more on the MIFI Classic EV1 because MIFI Classic tags are outdated. Now, if you are able to understand this diagram, so it means that you understood access bits. So we are going to come back to this. Now if you scroll down a little bit, now these are the access access conditions for sector trailer. What you have to remember here is this uh, letter C1, C2, C3. Now C1, C2, C3, this refers to three bits of the access uh, access rights. Now, C1 is the, the most significant bit and C3 is the least significant bit. Okay, C1, C2, C3. So, likewise, if you go to, if you go and look at the access bits of uh, the data block, so there also you will come across C1, C2, C3. Again, there are three bits here. Now, when you go back to this uh, table here, now you know that C1, C2, C3, and you know this is a MIFI classic uh, EV1 so there are four blocks in each sector now the access bits of block 0 is shown as C10 C1, C1 C20 C30 so remember the C1 C2 C3 just uh, just represent three uh, binary bits the zero here the subscript zero here this indicates uh, the three bits refers to block zero. If you take this one, it is C1, C2, C3, but the one as a subscript here, so this refers to the access bits for block one. Similarly, if you come across, if you see this uh, two as a subscript, it refers to the block two, and three as a subscript refers to the block three, which is a sector trailer in case of uh, 1K memory size. So if you know these bits, then it's very easy for you to understand this table. So here, if you look at, uh, you can ignore the byte 9 because this is uh, not part of the access bits. This can be used uh, to put any user data. If you look at this, uh, this byte 8, byte 8, if you take a look at this, the first four bits, so here, the C3 bits of all the four blocks are stored. You know, C3 0 refers to the C3 bit of uh, block 0. 
the C3 bit of block 1, C3 bit of block 2, C3 bit of block 3. So, in other words, so the value that is stored in that block is this value. So, the C3 bit of all the four blocks needs four bits. So, those four bits are stored there. Similarly, you know, you'll come across all the bits, all the second bit of the access rights are stored together and all the MSP, the most significant bit of access rights are stored together. So, that, that that's a secret here. So, we, are, we have done this bit. If you look at this one, so here the C2 bit of all the four blocks are stored together with the with the zeroth block here, with the the block one here, block two here, block three here. So if you want to store these type of data, you'll end up manipulating the bits. It's a kind of a, a data structure assignment. And if you look at this one, so here the zeroth bit of all the four blocks access rights are stored here. Now this and this are one and the same. Now if you compare if you compare this and this, this is just a complement of this number. So whatever number is stored here, the complement is stored here. And these two corresponds to C3. Likewise, there is one for C2 and one for C1 as well. So for C2, the complement of all the C2s are stored here. And the complement of all C ones are stored here. So this is this is what the access bits is all about. So when you start programming, if you are using any software tool, so you won't be seeing all this uh, all these bits at all because software takes care of generating this uh, valid format. But if you are trying to do something on your own, you have to play with these bits and you have to see that the four bits here corresponds to C3, the four bits here correspond to C2, and so on. So, with this background, you know, I'm going to show you uh, how, you know, we made a small tool in the software to, uh, to make you understand this concept. So, we have made a small change to this uh, Acer122 made easy software, this was version 1.2. I've connected my Acer122 reader writer. I'm going to place the UID changeable tag. The UID changeable tag is like a like a magic uh, card. So I would advise um, every student to have a, a UID changeable card because you can never ever destroy this UID changeable tag. You can play with the access rights. You can write something in invalid data. You can still recover uh, the card back. Whereas you cannot do this type of mistakes with the with the real the MIFI tags. Now I'm going to choose the UID changeable uh, screen here. So if you have the software, you've already seen this. Now if you activate, and you know if this UID changeable tag works with the concept of a backdoor. If you hit this uh, button here, it says the backdoor is open. Now you can read. I'm going to read this entire tag without any authentication. You know that's how the this uh, magic uh, card works. Now here you can see I'm going to play with a few sectors so you understand this access bits very well. So more or less all these sectors they are now set at uh, uh, the factory setting. And the factory setting is we have the sector trailer with access uh, bits access rights uh, one, and all the remaining data blocks have got access rights zeros. If you as a new tab is added here, if you click on access rights. This is, you know, what we saw in the documentation. So here, this screen will uh, uh, will allow you to find the value of B6, B7, B8. Now, just going to go through this quickly. In this sector trailer block, remember we are we are working only with the sector trailer because the access bits are stored within the sector trailer. So the first six bytes are the key A followed by three bytes where the access bits are stored that is in B6, B7, B8 and B9 is not part of any access rights or 
key you can use this to put any data i've seen some softwares they use this uh, to store some kind of hidden data and the remaining six bytes from b10 to b15 these are uh, the values of a key b now the access rights tab will generate the value of b6 b7 b8 if you are if you are playing with this UID changeable tag and you know this this editor is uh, you can you can key in the new data right in, inside the editor and save it so then it's good that you know you can you can get the values of b6 b7 b8 so assume that let's go with the i'm just going to change uh, right now it's all set to uh, 0, 0, 0. if i change it to 1 1 so here you got the table c1 c2 c3 now this is just a binary value of this number so the binary value of 0 is 0 0 0 if you remember just uh, at the start of this video so we uh, explained to you this c1 c2 c3 these are the uh, the three bits of the access rights and block one i am setting to 0 that's again the binary bits are 0 0 0 so because i don't know how to get the subscript here i have shown here as c10 see all these bits are the c1 bits so c10 means the the c1 bit of block 0 c11 is the c1 bit of block 1 c12 the c1 bit of block 2 and c1 bit of block 3 likewise here you got the c2 bit of block 0 so the c2 bit of block 1 c2 bit of block 2 c2 bit of block 3 then you got the c3 bit of block 0 c3 block 1 and so on up to block 3 now sector transfer to 1 so the the binary equivalent of 1 is 0 0 1 that's over here and if you look at if you look at this structure take for example b6 or take for example this the normal bits okay we'll come to that complement bits later on the b8 bits has got all the c3 bits followed by the c2 bit if you look at this one here now this is c33 which is over here so one is here the next one is c32 which is uh, here so so all these four bits are stored here c c33 c32 and so on followed by the c2 bits you go in the reverse order from from bottom up so c23000 zero, 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 zero is stored here now look at this complement and follow see this uh, byte 7 as well the byte 7 has got c1 all the c1 bits in the order of a c3 c2 c1 c0 so all zeros they will go to byte 7 the first four bits are about four bit zero so here take a take this byte 6 the byte 6 has a complement of the first four bits is also called as a, a nibble in a, in in a, in a binary uh, terminologies. The first four bits refers to C two, is a complement of C two. So these these four bits must be the complement of these four bits. Now we know these four bits are stored here. These four bits here. The complement of that makes it all one, which is what you see all the four bits one. Next, if you see this, uh, the C1, this is the complement of the C1 bits, which is stored here, which is stored in B7. The four bits here refers to C1. The complement of that is all ones are stored here. So likewise, we have got these in the byte 7. In the byte 7, you have got the complement of C3. The C3 is stored here, which is the these four bits. So if you take the complement of this, you'll, you'll end up getting 0, 1, 1, 1. So, so the value of uh, B6, B7, B8 will be FF 0780. For the factor set, if you go back to the editor, you'll see that it is uh, the B6 FF 0780. So, so that's how you, know, uh, you convert this access bits to the byte values. So assume that I want all my i'm going to set you can refer to this uh, table here now i'm going to change I'll assume that i want all access um, all block to have a access access right set to three just go through this uh, three what it is sector trailer 
with the three. If you go to this this top table here, this is a sectoral trailer. Refer to number three. This is a binder number three. So, if you read this entire line, you'll come to know what exactly this uh, access rights three means. So the way I'm going to read this is, so here I'm going to refer to uh, this line now. Now, go up. Can I read? Can you read key A? You cannot never. Can I write a uh, key A? Yes, you can. Oh, sorry. I was uh, this one. Sorry. Yeah. Can I read the key A? No. Can I write key A? Yes. But you have to authenticate before with the key B. Now, can I read access bits? Yes, I can read with either A or B. Can I write? I can write or I can change the access bits only with after authentication with the key B. Can you read key B? No. Can you write key B? Yes, I can. Now, this setting 03 is very common uh, among the software developers. This is basically making the key B as the prominent key here. Now, if you, if you refer to this line, key A is not at all used. So, it's only the key B that are used to read the value of uh, uh, to, to change the value of keys or to change the value of access rights or to change uh, or the value of the key B itself. So, this is like you know um, inverting the, the factor setting. In factor setting, everything was done using key A, whereas in, uh, in this access rights uh, 3, it is done by key B. Problem later videos, I'm going to come back to this in more detail. If you see what's the access uh, bits. Uh, what access 3 does for the data block if you if you look at uh, the bottom table here now this is uh, this is what we'll be referring 0 1 1 is a 3 now here to read it at a block you need key b i can read you can write to a data block using key b you can never increment never decrement okay and this entire line or this access rights 3 refers to a data block. Now, by having all these uh, 3's here, we are making the key B to read and write a data block. Now, key A is not at all used here. So, this is what you know it is. Now, I want uh, I want to copy, I'm going to copy this 0F00FF. Now, I'm going to apply this to the sector 2. Now, if you go to uh, B6, I want this to be, so it is a 0F, it is 0F and a 0, 0 and FF. So, B9, even though it's a data block, I can, I can put anything there. Now, I have just modified directly the access, uh, access bits, bytes here, B6, B7, B8. And if you hit If I hit write, it says the write is successful. If you look at these uh, commands, you know, these are all standard APDU. Now, as you can see here, uh, as soon as you finish writing, the grid is refreshed, showing you the, the access rights of all of the data blocks. So, that's exactly what we wanted. Now, the block 0, block 1, block 2, and block 3 all set to the access rights uh, 3. Now, what the software has done internally is after writing this uh, this sector trailer block 7, it has read, it has decoded these numbers, it has set these uh, numbers uh, you know, correctly. That's all. The, it's just a, a playing with the a bits and bit of a, a programming. You can do that. I'm going to do this again so that you understand this concept. Now, I'm going to try uh, what, how about um, you can play with it. As I said, you can never ever destroy the UID uh, changeable tags. So I'm going to set all to seven. It doesn't have to be you now all these uh, numbers same. Now just go with uh, something. So try. Let's try to do with something uh, different here. So I want block block zero to be. I want block zero to be say this 2 I want block 0 to be 2 
and I want block block 1 to be a 3 and block 2 to be 4 doesn't matter what I set here and block uh, 3 that sector block I want that to be say 5 now this makes no sense here as I said uh, before you have to be very careful when you play with this some of these combinations you know um, may not work with the actual uh, MIFA classic tags it's okay with the UID changeable tags so here the, this video is all about uh, to make you understand how this access weights are generated now here the block uh, block 0 is a 2 now the binary equivalent of 2 is 0 1 0 and block 1 I want that to access it's 3 it is 0 1 1 4 1 0 0 and 5 1 0 1 and when you take these bits and apply this logic of uh, uh, complement bits you'll end up getting the values here now I'm going to copy C3, C5 and A3. So I'm going to copy here C3, C5 and uh, A3. Let's make sure C3, C5 and A3. So this combination might destroy uh, uh, the real MIFI classic tag, so you have to be careful. So here I just modified that. If I write, you can see that you know, it's uh, C2, C3, C4, C5. And it's modified. While you do the right operation, you can also change the values of the keys here. I could have just done, say, assume that same time, I also want to change the value of this uh, key. can still write it so I'm going to revert back all this sector back to the factory setting now I know this is the values of the factory setting it's a uh, ff 0780 to know how you got that in the factory setting block 0 is at accident 0 block 1 0 block 2 0 and block block uh, 7 sector as this so you get ff 0780 so I'm going to modify so we were here so I'm going to modify the FF 07 and 80 and I also want to change the value of this key so that I can use this in other software where I read with the same uh, keys set this to FF So I'm going to write. So when you write, you, you got back 001. Probably can all, I'm also going to do the same thing here as well. With the FF 07 and 80. And uh, write. And we got this back. Okay. So, so that's all you know, I got in this video. I hope you understood this uh, concept. You know, just keep reading the MIFI Classic uh, data sheet. Thanks for watching.